Well, good morning, everyone, again. And as I said before, my name is Beth Baker. I'm the Permit Process Program Manager with the Baltimore District Regulatory Branch. So now that Heather has provided an overview of the Texas Bay Agreement and the TMDL program and the overall mission of the core organization, the core's organization in partnering and implementing the Bay TML, I'm going to discuss the background and purpose of the Bay TMDL RGT. Issuance of the Bay TMDL RGT supports permit streamlining goals for this Texas Bay partnership. An executive order strategy for protecting and restoring the Chesapeake Bay watershed identified that federal coordination on permits that directly impact wetlands will be strengthened. Furthermore, the final 2014 executive order progress report recommended the development and implementation of permit streamlining measures for restoration projects as one of the actions needed to restore clean water and recover wetlands habitat. Finally, the draft Texas Bay Stream Health Management Strategy identifies the Bay TMDL RGT as a current effort to streamline permitting measures for TMDL activities and to ensure that projects used for credits in the Bay TMDL meet or exceed permitting requirements established to protect waters of the U.S. The core health system RGT will be an innovative solution to address the permitting challenges identified by our Chesapeake Bay partners. The Corps has regulatory responsibility to authorize permits for activities that impact waters of the U.S. Activities that are included in a general permit authorization have been determined to have minimal individual and cumulative impact on the aquatic environment and do not need to go through the full individual permit process. This Bay, this RGP, and the Bay TMDL program have mutually supportive objectives to strengthen protection of the nation's clean water resources and improve Federal Clean Water Act permitting. This Bay TMDL RGP can also create consistency and incentives for TMDL stakeholders to design their projects to conform to the terms and conditions of this new RGP and streamline their projects through the federal regulatory permitting process. The Corps met with our federal and state partners to share ideas for how to improve the permitting process. And in response to the stated needs communicated by the TMDL community, the Corps developed several tools to clarify permit requirements, such as the Nationwide Permit 27 checklist and guidelines, and the Permit Process Flowchart. In addition, then as now, the Corps recommends that prospective applicants get feedback during pre-application and joint evaluation meetings early in the process. Pre-application meetings help to streamline the permit process by informing the prospective applicant of concerns that are likely to arise during the evaluation of the project, such as compensatory mitigation requirements, historic property, or endangered species issues, and the need for information to be submitted with the application. After numerous meetings, our federal and state partners indicated that further streamlining tools to authorize Chesapeake Bay TMDL activities in waters of the U.S. may be needed that would ultimately save time and costs associated with processing certain projects by an individual permit. Based upon review of the watershed implement implementation plans, a substantial increase in the number of Department of the Army applications for Bay TMDL projects was projected over the next decade with one estimate upwards of 2,500 applications in the next couple of years. As proposed in the WIP, nutrient and sediment reduction goals may be achieved by a variety of methods, both within uplands and waters of the U.S. However, upland alternatives may not be practicable in certain cases. So the Corps reviewed the existing permit mechanisms that were in place at the time and determined that there was a gap for certain proposed projects having minimal effects to the aquatic resources did not fit within the threshold of current general permits, such as the 2012 nationwide permits or the Maryland State Programmatic General Permit. For example, some types of aquatic resource restoration and enhancement activities proposed in waters of the U.S. targeted at meeting the Chesapeake Bay TMDL goals may involve minimal conversion of aquatic resources, even when the impacts overall are minimal. 
In an effort to provide a streamlined form of Department of the Army authorization, the core issued the Chesapeake Bay TMPO RGT on July 1, 2015. This TMPL RGT is a tool that authorizes certain recurring Chesapeake Bay TMPL activities in waters of the U.S. that are part of an acceptable watershed strategy such as a WIP that is proposed to meet the Chesapeake Bay TMPL goals for nutrient and sediment reduction and that result in minimum individual and cumulative adverse effects on the aquatic environment and other public interest factors. If this day TMPL RGT were not available, certain TMPL activities would be required to go through the individual permit process. Ultimately, issuance of this RGT saves time and cost associated with processing these TMPL activities and, at the same time, ensures that aquatic resources are protected. When an applicant selects the project site and designs their project in accordance with the terms and conditions of this RGP, the permit review is streamlined through the Bay TMPL RGP process. In addition, the development of the Bay TMPL RGP under Section 404 of the Clean Water Act supports the permit streamlining goals of the Chesapeake Bay Executive Order for Restoring Clean Water and Recovering Habitat. Authorized projects may include the retrofit of existing stormwater management facilities or the retrofit of existing stormwater management facility outfall structures. The Bay TMPL RGP also authorizes the restoration and enhancement of non-tidal streams and non-tidal wetlands when proposed for the purpose of meeting the Tennessee Bay TMPL targets and result in an aquatic resource functional lift. Overall, this RGP authorizes activities heading minor individual and cumulative impacts on the aquatic environment and other public interest factors. Here is the URL again for the Bay TMPL RGP website and points of contact. Does anybody have any questions? I'm, I'm here to take some questions. If you would uh, like to put them into the chat, um, and just a reminder: at any time during the um, presentations and during this webinar, you can ask the questions. We do have the chat window up and we are uh, keeping track and we would, um, we'll be able to answer them at the end of each of the presentations and if we have time at the end. Okay, well, I don't see any questions right now coming up. Okay, so we're going to move on to the next presentation, which, oh, sorry. Okay, so, okay. So we got a question. How was the 2,000 linear foot and or one acre of impact threshold decided upon? Um, the Corps had looked at what we had in place um, for permit thresholds that had already had an effective um, permitting ability to have minimal impact. And we also talked to practitioners, um, to, to prospective practitioners of the TMPL, to um, talk to them about the projects and what types of projects that there were um, proposed and how what the limits of those projects might be. Um, so once we talked to them, we determined that there was um, a state, <clears throat> there was a consistent approach from current existing general permits that had been determined to be minimal, and we also were informed that most TMPL projects that were going to be proposed would fit under these limits. So <clears throat> that's how it was. It wasn't any scientific base. It was just based on um, what we had in place that had been proven effective, as well as talking to practitioners.
Okay, we have another one. Okay, let's see. I have a project, this is the question, I have a project that is looking to repair a failing stormwater management outfall. The client plans to seek PMDL credit. If the project design ends up being such that they can get it, but the main goal of the project is not PMDL reduction, how does a project like this fit into the process? Um, the, the, the PMDL RGP, this Bay PMDL RGP, is for projects that are proposed for the purpose of PMDL rejection. Um, so if you are seeking that PMDL credit, then I would, my, you know, it's not that you actually have to achieve that credit or get that credit uh, approved prior to submitting this. This is for projects that are uh, proposed for the purpose of complying with the Bay PMDL goals. So it does sound like this was, this would be, even though it's not the main goal, it is for the purpose of Bay PMDL reductions overall. It's, or is this because it's not Bay PMDL? Maybe that's the question I'm thinking. Um, these projects, this is specific to the Chesapeake Bay PMDL. So if it is for PMDL activities outside of that, that would not fit within this general permit, and we do have other types of general permits to authorize those act types of activities. However, in talking to practitioners, um, for those uh, jurisdictions that are within the Chesapeake Bay watershed, um, I there were um, often overlapping um, projects which would both achieve their um, regional TMPL goals as well as the Chesapeake Bay TMPL goals. So oftentimes they may be proposed or utilized for both TMPL types, both TMPL goals. So, okay, so then the other thing um, was that if a project is, um, so for projects that are seeking the TMDL credit, you really have to show that it is for nutrient and sediment removal. And those are the, that's what it would, that's what would fit into the criteria for um, the, the, the terms and conditions of this permit. Okay, we have another question here, moving on. Is the Bay TMDL RGP required for projects that are for TMDL nutrient sediment removal goals but do not fit within criteria for aquatic habitat enhancement, i.e., existing conditions include poured concrete, culvert to culvert, etc.? Um, there are going to be certain uh, projects such as the retrofit that are going to be pretty much solely for the nutrient and sediment removal goals. However, if it is a um, product, I'm having a hard time. I'm not quite sure how to answer this one. All right. Yeah. So the the question here again from Baltimore County is: Is the is the Bay TMDL RGP required for projects that are for TMDL nutrient sediment removal goals but don't fit within the criteria for aquatic habitat enhancement, like an existing conditions within like a stormwater management facility, port concrete, culvert to culvert? Um, we created the uh, category one of the Bay TMDL uh, RGP for um, those retrofit. Type of projects, so those would fit if they were within certain thresholds, and we'll talk about more about that in later portions of the presentation. However, for stream restoration projects, you, you do have to document functional risk um, because yeah, that's the definition of restoration. And if it, if it extends beyond the footprint of your stormwater management facility, 
it has to be a project that's document list. And that was really the only way we were able to justify um, like conversion on the project site, allowing minimal conversion because that is an impact, and we have to you know maintain that the impacts uh, only have minimal effects on the aquatic environment. So. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Nick, for answering that question. Uh, we're going to move on to make sure that Jack has a, enough time to present. Jack Denny is up next.